A few years ago in the summer, my parents decided to take me to visit my grandparents for a long weekend. They lived in a different city, but not that far away. It was around a four hour drive each way. Nothing much happened while we were there. The story is about what happened when we got back. We left on Sunday in the afternoon, so it was around dusk when we got back to our house. We lived in the suburbs, and we had a decent sized house. We were new to the neighborhood, and didn't know most of our neighbors yet. So when we left for the weekend, nobody in the area even knew we were gone. When we pulled into the driveway, I got a strange feeling. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I would soon find out. We got out of the car and walked up to the house. As soon as we entered, it was clear that we had been robbed. Every room showed signs of a burglary. Drawers were pulled out, belongings were scattered on the floor, and many things were missing. We immediately called the police, and we waited anxiously. I wanted to go and check my room, but my dad told me not to. He thought we needed to wait for the police, because he didn't want to ruin any evidence. It was tough for me to wait, but I did what he said. When they finally got there, they examined the house and collected evidence. They assured us they would do everything in their power to find the burglars. However, deep down, I couldn't help but fear that they would never be caught. We later found out that there were other robberies in the neighborhood. The police told us that whoever it was probably knew that we were going to be away for the weekend. Apparently, criminals can be pretty clever with that kind of thing. They may have been scouting out our house for a long time before the actual burglary. All the details were important. They probably knew that we were new to the area and that our neighbors wouldn't notice a strange vehicle in the driveway. It's all pretty creepy to think that those guys were studying us for weeks or months before invading our privacy the way they did. As time went on, there were no leads in the investigation. To this day, we have no idea who broke into our place, and we never got our stuff back. I was relieved that the burglars didn't take anything from my room. I was only 12 years old at the time, so I didn't really have anything valuable. I didn't see it that way at the time, though. We took measures to improve our home security, installing an alarm system and reinforcing the windows. We also made an effort to get to know our neighbors. It's important to keep an eye out for each other. We didn't do that in the first place, and we paid the price. It was the year 2013, and I was just finishing my last year of college. I lived in a ground floor apartment, sharing it with my two best friends Liam and Carter. The place was part of a large complex of buildings that were only three floors high, so it covered a lot of ground, but wasn't always that busy. Our place had two bedrooms. I had one, Carter had the other, and Liam had a section of the living room that we had blocked off with a big shelf. It was like a makeshift third bedroom. He paid a little less in rent because of that. We had a small gathering at our place one night. It was the three of us and two of our other friends, plus Liam's girlfriend. We were just sitting around talking and having a few drinks. As the night wore on, everyone else wanted to venture out and hit up a bar, but I decided to stay behind. I never liked going out as much as the others did. When everyone left, the apartment went quiet. I took a moment to unwind. I took a shower, then turned on the TV. It was rare to have the whole apartment to myself, and I enjoyed it. It was around 11pm by then. I put on a movie, and half watched it while scrolling around on my phone. Before I knew it, it was late. The clock struck 2am, and suddenly I felt pretty tired. The guys weren't back yet, but that didn't worry me. They would stay out really late fairly often, and I decided to go to bed. I headed into my room. I left the door unlocked because I wasn't sure if any of those bozos remembered to bring their keys. The last thing I wanted was to be woken up by them tapping on my window. I was asleep for a while, but suddenly my eyes fluttered open. I looked over to my phone, and it was only 2.45. I wasn't asleep for long. After I put my phone down, I looked up and noticed that my bedroom door was open. There was a dim light coming in from the living room. 
I was pretty sure that I had closed my door, so I was concerned. By then, I was pretty much wide awake. I looked to the other side of my room, and then I noticed a figure standing next to my window. My heart skipped a beat. I wasn't sure if it was real. It could have been my imagination. It was concerning enough that I leaned over and flicked on my bedside lamp, flooding the room with light. In an instant, I realized that it was real. There was a strange man standing over me while I was sleeping. With a startled expression, he darted away, vanishing through the door to my room. He was wearing a dirty red sweatshirt with a hole in the back near the bottom. I couldn't tell much else about him. I saw him only for a second or two while he was running away, and then I heard him burst out the front door. My immediate instinct was to reach out to my roommates. I was hoping they were home. I called out their names, hoping for a response. However, silence echoed through the apartment, a stark reminder that they were still out enjoying their night. I immediately locked the front door and checked all the windows. Then I paced around the apartment for a minute or two. The thought of calling the cops crossed my mind, but I decided against it. We had some things around the apartment that were not exactly legal at the time. I'd rather not get too specific. Our makeshift bedroom was also not exactly legal. Therefore, I didn't want to call the cops. I called Liam instead. They were still out on the town, but they were headed home. The bars had just closed. I was relieved that I wouldn't be home alone much longer. I waited in the living room, and when my roommates got there, I told them what happened. They didn't believe me at first, because I can be kind of a joker. I eventually got through to them, though. We all combed through the apartment to see if anything was stolen. Carter thought some money was gone, but he wasn't sure. Liam's stuff was all out in the open in the living room. He had his iPad on his bed, which would have been pretty easy to grab, but it was still there. Whoever that guy was didn't even bother to take anything. In a way, that's even more creepy than a robbery. We let it go, and we never left the door unlocked again. The creepiest part, though, is that I started seeing that guy around our neighborhood a week or so later. I didn't get a great look at him, but I did remember the red sweatshirt. I saw a man walking around in our complex in that same shirt. I even noticed him going in and out of one of the other buildings. I think he actually lived there. Luckily, I was moving out soon. We graduated only a few months later, and I moved on from that place. It's terrifying to know that I was living so close to that creep who broke into my room. In late September about five years ago, I was at home with my younger brother Dylan and our older sister Georgia. She was 16 years old, I was 11, and Dylan was 9. Georgia was supposed to be watching over us, however, she wasn't the most responsible when it came to babysitting. We didn't mind though. Nothing went wrong most of the time. Dylan and I would spend most of our time playing video games when our parents were away. That's because Georgia didn't care what we did. Dylan and I were in my room playing games. Georgia was downstairs watching TV. Suddenly, we heard footsteps coming up the stairs. Georgia burst into the room, her face pale with fear. She urgently whispered, Hide, there's someone in the house. I didn't hear anything from upstairs, but Georgia explained that somebody had come in the back door, which was unlocked. Dylan and I exchanged puzzled glances, our playful smiles quickly fading. We peppered Georgia with questions, trying to understand what was happening. We didn't believe her at first, but she was basically crying, so that convinced us. She didn't have all the answers, but the urgency in her voice told us enough. We needed to find a safe place, and fast. Dylan and I dove under the bed, squeezing ourselves into the cramped space. Meanwhile, Georgia darted into the closet. She quietly closed the door. The room fell into an eerie silence. The only sound was our quick, anxious breaths. We strained our ears, listening for any indication of the intruder's movements. Once we calmed down a little, I could hear some faint footsteps from downstairs. Georgia was right, there was somebody in the house. 
The three of us waited there silently for another five minutes, hoping the intruder would leave, but he didn't. Then we heard the creaking of footsteps on the stairs. Panic surged through me, but I knew I had to stay calm. Then Georgia came out of the closet and got us out from under the bed. We were almost too scared to move. She said we had to get out of there. Georgia walked over to the window and opened it. We were on the second floor, but there was a part of the roof that was under the window, and we climbed out onto it. When we got out, we closed the window behind us. There was a wooden frame on the side of the house. It was basically like a ladder, and we used it to climb down. Dylan and I had gotten in trouble for playing around on it before, because it was dangerous. In this situation, though, it was probably okay. Once we were down, the three of us headed for our neighbor's house. We sprinted across the yard and pounded on the door. Breathless and trembling, we poured out our story to our neighbor who opened the door. They had a kid who was Dylan's age, and we kind of knew them. Our neighbor quickly called the police and then called our parents. We sat together waiting. The police arrived before our parents did. We watched out the window as the cops dragged a man out our front door. It was dark by then, and we could not make out many details about him. Our parents arrived soon after, and we were able to go back home that night. We were surprised when we got back home, because nothing was taken from the house, and there was practically no damage. The only thing the intruder took was a jar of peanut butter, which was open on the kitchen counter. There was a distinct set of finger marks in it, as if he took a big handful. To this day, I have no idea how dangerous that man was. I don't know if he was there to hurt us, or if he was just some crazy guy who wandered in for no reason. I like to think it's the latter, but I'm really not sure. This happened a few months ago, July 29th to be exact. I'm a female, and at the time, I was only 18. I live with my mother, stepfather, and little brother in a three-bedroom apartment on the bottom floor. It's a nice place with two balconies, which are all about eight feet off the ground. The building is built on a rather steep slope. The front door of the apartment is self-closing, and when it closes by itself, it slams rather loudly. My parents had decided to leave and go out for some Indian tacos. And since I was home, they didn't bother to lock the door. I decided to stay home, because I'm an introverted extrovert, and had already been social enough that day. I wanted some time to myself. My family is located in a town in Nebraska that doesn't really have much crime. It's nothing like the part of town that we originated from. It's a town full of military families that have plenty of money. Pretty much the only things to worry about in that city are little brats who have become spoiled too much and think they can get away with anything. The apartment was set up pretty simple. You have the front door with a little hallway, which if you go right, you have the living room, kitchen, and dining room. When you go left, there's another hallway that has three bedrooms and a bathroom. My room is the very first one in the hall. One cannot pass my room without me knowing. This was an intentional choice when we moved there, due to my anxiety and PTSD. I have problems with paranoia because of past experiences. My little brother was intentionally put in the bedroom between my own and my parents at the end of the hall because of said paranoia. Mainly my need to check on my family members after I have one of my terrible nightmares. I had laid back on the futon in my room and had my bedroom door closed. That way I could enjoy my privacy without my anxiety kicking in and making me think somebody was in the apartment with me. I was listening to true horror stories on my headphones and reading Naratu fan fiction on my phone when I heard the front door open and close. I glanced at the clock. It read 7.36 p.m. I thought my family was back with my little brother who would burst into my room without knocking. I waited. No yell from my mom that they were home. No door opening. Nothing. I took off my headphones and listened. I could hear someone walking around on the carpet. The familiar swish noise of footsteps traveled around the whole place. 
I waited for my anxiety to rise up in my throat before the calm came. The problem that I have with my anxiety and other issues is that everything happens as a delayed reaction. During a crisis, I'm able to act completely calm and in control, but after I'm in a safe place, I break down completely. I sat on my futon, opening my mouth slightly to breathe quieter, smooth, slow breaths through my nose and mouth at the same time. My heart still pounding, I looked at the door to my room. I was waiting, thinking that I must just be hearing things again, thin apartment walls and such. I heard the person walk down the hall and try to open my parents' door, but it was locked. I stared at my door even harder. I heard them turn and walk back down the hall, stopping halfway. They must have seen the light under my door, I thought. I watched the door, not wanting to move from my futon and have the metal futon stand make a loud creaking noise. They came to my door and I heard them touch it. The instant I saw the door move slightly, I jumped up and ran to the door. The entryway to my room has the door inside a small square area, so I ran over, put my back against the wall, and put both feet on the door. I grabbed a nearby blanket and put it at the bottom. I watched the door handle never move, they never even touched it. The person on the other side just kept pushing on my closed and latched door, no lock just me holding it closed. I felt the door push against the weight of my feet and legs. They were pressing into it, and I knew I was not imagining it. I could actually feel the door move. I still had my phone in my hand. I quickly turned the call volume all the way up and dialed 911. A man answered, and I gave him my address and such. The volume was so loud, you could hear the conversation as if the phone was on speaker mode. I explained the situation to the dispatcher, and we talked a bit. He asked me if I had something to defend myself with. I told him that I had pepper spray in my purse, but that it was eight feet away from my bedroom door. I laughingly said that it was probably not a good idea right now. The dispatcher agreed with me. During all of this, the person on the other side of the door had been listening, and it seemed like they had finally understood that I had called 911, because I heard them run through my apartment over to one of the balcony doors, rip it open, and run out. I informed the operator of this, and we talked until the cops arrived and checked the apartment. Nothing was taken, nothing that I could tell. My family came home while the cops were still there, and freaked out. My mother nearly went mama bear, she was freaked. So that's the story of why you should always keep your doors locked, even when you're home.